Hey, good morning, good morning, buenas, sa Saipan. Good morning, Sinemai. This is si uh, Fabian in the Lesio Talo. Apa talo si Fabian na ugan. Everybody, good morning. I'm just diving right into it without even uh, waiting for, you know, the viewers to uh, pop in. <laughs> so anyway, good morning, everybody. While everybody is... Uh, Trying to pop in or tuning in. Uh, I'm just gonna start anyway. If you wanna replay, what the heck I just uh, <laughs> was saying? No, no, no. Sometimes I just try to, uh, you know, fill in the gap of just saying anything, whatever it is, until people start tuning in. We got uh, one person. Sometimes it doesn't show that people are tuning in, but other than that, no. There, there. <laughs> <laughs> in this Facebook, sometimes it takes time. It takes time to tune in. But Alpha uh, Talos Fabian, this morning behind me is the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Island flag. Uh, this is our flag here. If you are not from our island, it's a uh, flag behind me. It's a very beautiful flag with a star. And you can see there a gray color of that is a. Uh, stone it's a lattice stone and um, it represents um, our people the chamorros here on the island of the marianas island and uh, in circle uh, as you can see those are the komomor from the carolinian family and that are almost like a headband huh? <laughs> but it's not a headband it's like a, a crown put it on top uh, on top of your head and it's so beautiful yeah, my grandmother is a Carolinian, yes, a descendant from uh, Saroa, the island. I think, yeah, right, 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 right. But other than that, good morning, everybody, here in Saipan. It's Monday morning here on uh, our island of uh, Saipan. It's beautiful, and it's just almost 6 o'clock. I think we're just about 5 minutes away from 6 a.m. here on the island of uh, Saipan. It's a beautiful island, and um, I will never leave home. This is my home, and uh, you know uh, I love the island. Uh, after uh, being away from uh, this island, where I, I was born in 1961, I'm 62 years old anyway. So, <laughs> like, what the heck? And later, what are you, where are you getting at? They're just trying to uh, fill in the gap, like I said. You know, while people are tuning in, just introducing myself that I'm from this island of uh, uh, Saipan. And the uh, type, uh, the island of Saipan comprises of other no, bigger island. It's called um, apparently the Rora and Tinian. Rora is more closer to Guam. Guam uh, island, which is called Guahan. <laughs> our, our family too, the Chamorros, and that uh, they have their own uh, different status of being the, the uh, U.S. territory. The Northern Marianas Island comprises of again Rota, Tinian. Uh, and Saipan and uh, an island chain of island north of uh, us, Saipan, um, uh, just about f more than I would say 14 or so. Yeah, it was very you know, difficult to memorize all of them. <laughs> I can just name some of them, but uh, anyway, anyway, uh, thank you very much for tuning in for Fatalisi Fabian this morning. Yeah, um, before I do that, I like to kind of uh. Uh, sing a song of our singing in my anthem. I'm just been um, what it called a slacking of singing it. I love this song. I think the uh, my cell phone here, the video is kind of like kind of focusing. I don't know how is that because probably I'm not center and it's keep going in and out because of the uh, focus 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 and I need to focus here or else so anyway uh, again about our flag I think I just gonna stray away from that <laughs> this is our commonwealth the northern Marianas island flag it's a US new uh, uh, commonwealth here on our island we hold a um, Afrani passport our passport um, this kind of passport. It's a, this is an expired one, but mine is uh, in the uh, yeah, safety box, or safe box, no worry, safety box. <laughs> so we got, uh, what's his name? Let me use my eyeglass here to see your name. See, uh, 
Joel Manglonia, thank you for tuning in, sir. Yeah, I think you may be in uh, uh, the mainland because most of you guys that are in the mainland are tuning in more than here in Saipan. They're still snoring, but it's Monday morning. Some of them are already you know, still hangover. <laughs> if you work in the government, Mokpo. <laughs> But uh, this is a U.S. passport that uh, belongs to me. It's expired and I've already renewed mine. Um, this is the um, the uh, certificate of identity. And this is uh, kind of an antique. And this is my uh, certificate of identity way back in 1978. This is uh, what they would issue you in 1978. Uh, this is almost like uh, the transition from the trust territory the trust territory no uh, passport is this kind and I'm collecting all of this for uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, an artifacts you know just to in case in the uh, distant future when that time comes where all of our new um, generation to come will ask you know hey good morning good morning up at Talusi Fabian yeah, John Toto Marianas, Don Cabrera. Good morning, Don. Thank you, just Mossy, no, sir, for tuning in. But like I said, no, sometimes I'm just feeling in the gap while people are tuning in. It takes time, sometimes it's five minutes. I don't think I've been on this one for five minutes, and people are not tuning in, as you can say. You know, sometimes I have a topic to talk about, but then, you know, I just decided to kind of fill in the gap instead of sitting here on my ass, just staring you know, at the <laughs> cell phone. So, I was just introducing a little bit just for to fill in the gap that no, this is our new trust territory of the Pacific Island. I said, wow, Mr. Indalesio, I've never seen that. Yes, see, uh, Sima Stephen, hey, good morning. Go for bro, my brother. Yeah, my brother, we deployed together to Iraq. This guy is the man right there. Yeah, give him the great coordinates. I will you just... You no know, rocket your ass. <laughs> Go for bro. What's <laughs> that, Stephen? Is the guy you call in and he'll drop the shit on you, right, Stephen? <laughs> All right, this guy. See now, you just I just remember that we got Aaron. Man, I'm squinting. I'm sorry if I wear my uh, eyeglass like the nerd and it'll be like, uh, okay, I see Aaron. R.R.T. Uh, Aaron? Aaron. Frank with Sostimo and others are tuning in. Annie Duenas, thank you very much. So this is the uh, passport for the trust territory, as you can see the design on it. And I'm keeping a lot of this just for the purpose of um, uh, education. I, I love to collect antique stuff, even the flags and you name it, everything that, you no. Know, it's an antique from here on our island. Uh, when I was in the mainland, I do collect antiques too. I love to collect new uh, money, uh, old monies, um, coins and you know, uh, stamps, old stamps, postcard, you name it, everything. I just love antique stuff. Yeah, and I'm getting to be, I guess I'm an antique already <laughs> myself. Okay, good morning, John. And then uh, after the the uh, during the transition after from this passport the trust territory we transition to this called certificate of identity identity and this is the one uh, they have to make this for me to um, to uh, travel to California in 1978 to uh, go on uh, for more education opportunity in the mainland my senior year and then uh, during those time, um, I was there. I think I came. Man, it, it, when I was just there, I joined the military and I just, then I, I had to buy this one, the passport. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the, uh, it's an old one. I have to replace it. Mine is in the safe box. Yeah, or in the safe box. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's the, uh, just a little bit of education of our transition. We got Grace of Blom. Grace will be like, a, man, I've never seen that certificate of identity. <laughs> I was born in the late 80s. I don't know when were you born, Grace, but uh, prima. Yes, Grace of Blom, you know, yes. Grace, Grace, is that? 
Is that a great say, uh, no? Yeah. But I'm not yeah, I think that I'm a problem. I'm uh, uh, seeing the same, a different uh, grace. But anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, I'd like to let you know, um, first of all, um, I'm going to sing the uh, our CNMI anthem, which you know, I haven't seen, uh, seen that uh, lately on my shows. And I love it. Yeah. So let me wear my eyeglass. And uh, like I said, this, um, if I make mistake, I'm not claiming that uh, I'm one of those like God's guy, probably the very perfected one. <laughs> I'm just seeing it, just like anyone else. Sometimes when I don't know it, when I'm seeing, we we're all singing the cinema anthem, uh, we just hum it, right? Especially on the Carolina you know, version. But I have a Carolina version here, but I'm putting on my eyeglass because uh, this is a reading eyeglass. Yeah, it's getting worse and worse as far as no, me reading. But uh, all you know, I'm as far as distant and know my surroundings. It's pretty good, pretty good. I have my uh, eyes checked with Dr. Hart. Yeah, I'm 62 years old. I'm very stubborn as far as no, uh, wearing eyeglass. Eyeglass. Now, this is a reading glass. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I'm just putting it ahead of time so just in case I, uh, or not just in case when I get to the Carolinian version. So, <clears throat> let's see. So, I'm gonna sing the, uh, the our cinema anthem, both the uh, Chamorro and Carolinian, and uh, uh, I'm a kind of a, an asshole sometimes, you know. Um, I like to do things just on my own without being dictated what, uh, what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes people get all upset and tell me to sing the Carolinian side, but then I have to force my ass to learn it because, you know, my grandma is Carolinian. And, but before when people are telling me like, hey, the hell, this is not a freaking official, no, uh, <laughs> me singing a cinema anthem and I didn't sing the Carolinian version as I blocked them. <laughs> like, uh, what? 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 So I'm gonna sing the R C N Anthem and both. No? And so here's the Carolina version down here, but I'm gonna go ahead and sing the uh tomorrow first as uh, the sequence uh, are in that uh, pattern. Sometimes I, I just mess it up. I don't know why I uh, down there, but yes, 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 yes. yes. Correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, because something didn't just a while. Half a day from Guahan, Jeff. Now, no, my brain sometimes I get no, uh, get so irritated, you know, uh, about my my uh, fondness. 
my uh, thought process sometimes you no know, it tricks you when you start to really think deeper and it's just as simple as the uh, cinema you know anthem song and believe it or not sometimes um when i'm trying to uh, say all my my uh, the names of my dogs here yeah i have 18 dogs and uh when i'm feeding them and i just look at my dog and like uh, what the fuck is your name <laughs> I feed them every day. I'm <laughs> like, okay, Leo, Doug, uh, Bentley. You know, I'm looking, uh, you know. Then uh, I would be calling uh, all of their names, you know. And it'd be like, the doctor just like waggling their tail, like, okay, what's my name? Just put down the fucking food and let me eat. <laughs> oh, Lisa. So. If I make a mistake, then it's okay. All right, it's okay. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up in the laser and sing the fucking song. <laughs> but see, most of the time, <clears throat> honestly, um, I reflect on myself and the way I think. And um, once when I was taking the uh, fucking eyeglass, <laughs> the psychology classes, and that was my major anyway. Um, it's very interesting uh, subject. I was basically more, I was supposed to be a math major because, you know, us English uh, as a second language, what the fuck, I'm always being slapped on uh, about my uh, English grammar and having to memorize things to respond to questions on my test because I would memorize things because I was just that bad in, uh, in English and my grammar and everything. And the teacher, even from uh, uh, Hubble Junior High School, Miranda's High School, and to um, uh, Monterey, I mean, the Seaside High School in California. You know, teacher, this is almost like they're all new in conspiracy to write me down this uh, sentence like, uh, <laughs> oh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hans. Good morning. Uh, right, so they, they always say that, uh, use your own words. <laughs> I have to put up with that bullshit, but now look, I can't even memorize much of anything, you know, um, even the cinema anthems, like uh, my brain is tricking me. So anyway, um, I took, new, uh, I was focusing more on mathematics and it's been, uh, research have indicated that you know, us, you know, the uh, Asi Asians are very good in math again, because you know, it's just the way it is, uh, to go to uh, an English uh, grammars and all this bullshit, I don't know. <laughs> so I end up you know, just uh, focusing on math and math and math and when it comes down to word problem I'm fucked that's where my grades start going down but when it comes down to just you know, uh, just figuring uh, you know algebra and, and geometry and you know all those you know, calculus just hey I'm, I'm good <laughs> as long as you know, you're not asking me you know, uh, uh, question as far as no word problem, you know. If the train is traveling, <laughs> like fuck, <laughs> I'm just fucking trying my best to understand, no, no, my, the, you know, to comprehend the reading on that uh, math work. So I messed up on that. So where am I getting on this? Actually, I'm trying to get to the fact that you no, know, the reason why I end up getting away from math because when I went to college, my God, my college professor was freaking going, you know, 1,000 miles an hour. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. So anyway, to reduce the stress, I end up, I think, you no, know, just kind of accidentally uh, register up for a say, introduction to psychology and I found my teacher and see how teachers can make a difference in your life. He was just like uh, using psychology class as a, as a very entertaining you new know, uh, subject, you know, he'll be just making fun. I mean, uh, uh, what do you call it? Being like almost like a, going to a comedy show using a real life experience or life out there in the world in terms of you know, how you know, uh, a person's you know, brain works and operates, you know. And I was very fascinated and I said, wow, you know, you can even, uh, you've never knew, I guess reflect on things, what you're doing. Uh, 
you can probably be more in tune in your thought process more than just just operating like you just a thinking person who just operating in a in a world without even realizing you know uh about you know the way you're in tune with you know how you affect people or what people may be thinking just everything the holistic way of looking at the world in a more of you thinking uh you know you know when um when um how you feel for the day what you're thinking for the day why certain things is affecting you, you know, for that day you no know, no uh, yeah self-reflection so anyway shut the fuck up in the ratio and that's how i end up in uh uh, changing my uh, uh, major from math <laughs> psychology to Dr. Bancroft. Ah, you know, I think I took a few class from you. I think it's time to change. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see if you sing this.
wedding pissed off anybody now that I see more <laughs> version. <laughs> so uh, you can uh, put your hand up. <laughs> like people, like come on people, this is not a feature. I'm just singing a song. I'm just singing a song for you guys. And uh, now I have to kick my ass to learn it. So I don't have to piss off my uh, followers like a uh, fucking delicious. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna sing another song since some of you guys are pushing in a lot of uh, uh, love emoji. Uh, um, these are just uh, the oldest tomorrow uh, from uh, my uncle Joe Cabrera. Yeah, see, uncle Joe. And uh, let me try and see him. Yeah. So again, this is a reading glass. Yeah, God Bu is landmark. Magahi Tanotangan. Yeah, bonito. She just smiles. See, it is bonito. Yeah, sometimes so when I go to the beach at Civic Center or anywhere for around our island, <laughs> I can imagine out of 60,000 people, I'm only standing on a ground. I'm all by myself. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, how much you guys are missing that? The beautiful sand, beautiful water, very warm. It's just looking at the sunset. It's just beautiful. It's all by myself. Fuck, when I was I was in Hawaii. Ah, uh, yes. Can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, you, is this uh, already occupied? No, ma'am, sir. <laughs> yeah, they went to the bathroom. Sorry. Fuck. Where, where, where else? Uh, <laughs> Uh, we can go over there, over there. Yeah, that's not occupied yet. <laughs> uh, and we got our friend Ted over here. Hey Ted, good morning sir. Yeah, and saving Guam is beautiful, you know. And you, we got a lot of new space, just all to ourselves, and it's so beautiful. But when you go to other places, like, uh, you know, the fucking new uh, umbrella is just like, whoo, that, that's how far the umbrella <laughs> You just see umbrella with a lot of people right across the uh, the, uh, the shoreline. You know, the people are just enjoying. I went to Myrtle Beach and it's like shit. Same goes with that. Uh, you know, um, people in the mainland or elsewhere, and even in Hawaii, getting so crowded. My goodness. Um, can you scoot over, please? <laughs> the people are fighting probably for space like that. Oh my goodness, but the same goes with some of the picnic area here, people are reserving it, but it's not really a problem yet, but all in all, it's all good, yeah, good magicians. <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to share with you uh, one of these, uh, Afraneski, uh, one of my friends, Gus uh, Litulumor, also very much uh, uh, committed into the um, physical fitness. And he kind of sent me this uh, regarding you know, uh, discipline. And uh, I think for me, discipline is where I would probably kind of... <laughs> Sometimes I get so fixated with that word and what uh, it's just causing us a lot of low self-esteem when we don't, uh, when we fail, no? Or whatever it is that, no, we dream of and not... Uh, being disciplined about it. So listen to this one here. Dreams without goals Come on. are just dreams. Come on. And ultimately, they fuel disappointment. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply discipline, discipline. Come but on. more importantly, consistency, consistency. Because without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you'll, you'll never finish. finish. Dreams without goals are just dreams come on and ultimately they fuel disappointment on the road to achieving your dreams you yeah. must apply discipline, discipline. Come but on. more importantly consistency, consistency because without commitment you'll never start but without consistency you'll, you'll never finish. finish yeah um um when i was uh and i'm gonna try and see if i can uh, apply this in uh, my field of work when I was working at the Saipan Southern High School and I was a student counselor, <coughs> student guidance counselor and uh, I'm pretty much not more of a very, you know, uh, how do I say that, a very loving counselor. <laughs> like, oh, you know, I understand, you know, more like a disciplined type of approach, you know, 
uh, when student uh, was sent to my office just for, you know, a very nice counseling you know, to make them understand about the behavior in the classroom with interaction with the teacher, you know. I'm more like a father. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm not the fuzzy wuzzy kind of like a, a person. And I see that in myself. And then um, one day the, um, the vice principal, Mr. Greg Harrison, says, hey, you know what? <laughs> what did he call me? The, uh, it's almost like the, uh, how do I say that? I, would, I don't want to say the name, you know, um, that can apply in, in Germany. I, I don't say because if I say this, probably block this uh, um, show. <laughs> but I'm always a, a person that you know, would would love to handle discipline, and and I never ask him. But he, he says, "Hey, you're gonna be the uh, dean of discipline." It's almost like I'm still you no. Know, uh, my job is still you no. Know, the title is still a student guidance counselor, but because he's uh, what do you call a vice principal, in a sense, you know, pretty much you no. Know, um, in charge with many administrative. Uh, Administration, so I said, okay, that's be a good challenge, and so I did. Went into a, a student discipline, and he got all the tricks to uh, kind of mentor me how to uh, work with discipline. However, no, I got that personality of of being uh, just like what it says here, no, a discipline with a consistency to meet what your goal is, and uh, exactly, you know, uh, you know what I uh, um, uh, enforce in discipline is to be very very consistent because you no know, my goal is to ensure that you know, the uh, the school environment the community of that school uh, is very conducive conducive to, to education that you no know, you no know, uh, the student uh, behavior on campus shall not uh, uh, disrupt the education process no and so I have to <laughs> read a lot of the uh, student uh, rules and regulation uh, board of education no, no book and uh, i have to apply them very consistency very consistent and if you're not consistent mock poor no matter what and the student will bury your ass <laughs> especially in high school with all those students that uh, um, are growing up no so that's what happened um, my first goal uh, it was just kind of stressing me out because I have to learn a lot of the uh, the uh, policy and everything and the tricks of how to you know, deal with student uh, discipline. <laughs> so I kind of like this again. If you're just tuning in again before I start on with my that story, I like to kind of again. Dreams without goals Come are just dreams. Come on. And ultimately, they fuel disappointment on the road to achieving your dreams you must apply discipline, discipline. but more importantly consistency, consistency because without commitment you'll never start but without consent so you have to be very committed you know and that new uh, your goal you have to be committed and be consistent on those steps to to meeting your goal so my biggest uh, issue uh, that I saw the biggest issue, you know, that I saw at Saipan Southern High School was uh, student discipline in the area of tardiness to school. And if you are my student from Saipan Southern High School, I know you're going to be <laughs> flashback. <laughs> You'll be like freaking uh, PTSD on this one. Like I said, all those whistle and the binocular and the kids are just running across the field. Um, <laughs> I started off um, observing and observing the uh, slack of student uh, being just started to school <laughs> walking in slowly from and when the bell you know ring let's say uh, eight and uh, or the tardy bell man five minutes to eight and then it goes on no, to the five minutes or ten minutes uh, tardy bell there were like 86 students for tardy a day and it's just it's just so so sad, pathetic, and it's just like looking at it like I just want to throw up that you no know, such a uh, one issue of you no know, lacking the discipline in that area of the student. You know they want to be tardy, tardy, freaking. You know they just come in 8:45, 9 o'clock, and you know sometimes they're even you know, 
going to first period, but he just <laughs> turned to go to second because it's just already that. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. So what's, uh, what's going on here, you know? So I start to apply you know, uh, strict discipline, consequences, and be very consistent. And uh, to make a long story short, it drops from uh, 86, yeah, going down almost to just uh, at times with just four or five or miracle if there's six. Yeah, so uh, parents like, yeah, for a bit of I used to wake up my kids and now they're waking me up. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Things is changing here as far as the student discipline and uh, it's going to have stay like that. So in a day, you know, I'm really um, being very consistent in the discipline uh, of the student and even to the fact that you no know, teachers are so much slack in that area, you know. They just like allow the student to walk in without you know, having to partake. Imagine teachers were also part of the problem. Yeah, I said, you know what? You want to be famous? Famous being uh, very strict and consistent, not you know, making the student no slack off with uh, policy because it's very important to partake. And sometimes I have to even pull the student out of the classroom. Hey, you come over here. You, you read in search, yeah. And the teacher sit there like, uh, <laughs> instead of saying, hey, you're tardy, you know, I didn't see Mr. Delace, you know. No, they just sit there and... <laughs> They, they don't want to feel that you no know, pressure from the student to say, Hey, you're a bad teacher if you're really following the uh, rules. You're a good teacher. You're my best teacher because, you know, you're making me violate the rules. <laughs> and I sometimes have to address that in uh, staff meeting. You know, hey, we all want to be popular, but not in the sense of, you know, having to make the student uh, break the rules. Yeah. And they hit him back. Uh, to them, you know, to be in the classroom, and even the teacher had a bad day, you know, yeah. You know, I got to Mr. Lesho. Yeah, you too better not. <laughs> Students sit down and say, Mr. Lesho, I chew and chew and chew and chew, and I don't know what's wrong with, you know, that teacher. And, uh, you know, it, the student become your enemy once, you know, you decided to discipline them with, with no consistency. Then, Lanyagi, you know, no, Mr. Studia, blue, stupid, yeah. Yeah, for now, <laughs> just because he has this menstruation, or. Uh, her menstruation. <laughs> but anyway, um, I like this uh, this year. Um, I have, was very uh, a person of discipline. I think I grew up with my dad disciplining me, and I kind of hold on to that. And then uh, uh, I applied that in school, you know, to make sure that the school environment is. Uh, very intact as far as you no know, to be very conducive, very good, you no know, not being a disrupted you no know, education environment. And uh, sometimes I get this like I'm still less sure. Yes, better to be tardy than uh, being absent. Good. Yeah, just be on time. No answer, but sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's just an excuse for you to be, uh, to say that no, you can be tardy all you want and uh, as long as you're not absent. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it seems like it's uh, very reasonable, but it's unacceptable. <laughs> and so, uh, there's time when you say uh, 86 students are tardy, and I'm mindful for this, versus uh, 5 or 6 students are tardy. I would rather have that you know, five or six students with the fact that you no know, that student that is saying um, I'd rather be uh, be uh, tardy than absent or might as well be absent, it's okay. Because whoever is absent based on you know, the fact that they don't wanna come to school being tardy, doesn't wanna be uh, disciplined. That's sad because that's their life, that's their future, the unfortunate that you no, know, I have to be the one to be responsible for those kind of bad decisions. Uh, you don't see 80 student or 85 student want to be absent just because <laughs> just, they want to be absent rather than being tardy. So as you can see the effect that you no, know, not all student wants to be absent, you know, just because you no, know, they've decided to be tardy very effective that's how you kind of like twist things around and ensuring that you no know, the the student benefit the disciplinary process yeah 
So they'll be running to their classroom. They'll be like freaking going in there and be on time to class. And it stayed there for a while. And it was very you know, nice to feel that uh, uh, I don't I don't hold that immediate gratification of being uh, a popular you new know, um, disciplinarian. I don't because I'm gonna make uh, the uh, student like me and and allow them to you know, uh, get away with breaking the rules. Uh, it's not about that. You're not getting paid. To be popular in school campus and be likable, you know, and that's why sometimes the teacher fails for that because they don't want to be stressed out. And I can imagine 30 students or 25 students in the classroom, you're trying to balance, you know, that. And sometimes I have to sit in the classroom to give the teacher a break because, you know, the whole classroom <laughs> become freaking like a, you're all in church. <laughs> but, um, But it was, uh, then you know, student later on in their life, that's more you know, gratifying to be approached and say, Lord, I'm always on time to my work. Like, I understand now what you are doing in school. And uh, school is a, kind of a, 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 a secondary community. You know, if anything, it's a primary community for a learning process for uh, a growing you know, uh, child. Yeah. <laughs> They just keep calling me back. Hey, Mr. Lesu, some uh, some of the students that go to work, even some of the staff right now, they were calling me back. Oh, no, 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 no. Let a new generation. I'm not a freaking no, for the rest of my life be a Rambo of that school. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let a new generation take on, and uh, you know whether you know, whatever is good or bad or probably even better. And I just pray to allow them to be more of a better than myself and my time. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself, no, <laughs> chasing around politicians. <laughs> so that's what that's how I started off with a lot of this. Uh, again, um, reclaiming my own uh, discipline. You know, when I start to gain weight and uh, you know just slacking off with my discipline in that short period of time when I came back from Iraq. Uh, couple deployment it was just my brain uh, we are just as much human as much human and uh, when I was working in psychiatric ward <laughs> in the military you know, uh, there was at, at one time a uh, freaking freak the hell out of me that uh, an officer a captain that was a, a, a psychologist I, yes I was admitted into a ward because you no know, he just you know freaked out of his job as a psychologist. Uh, <laughs> sometimes in life experience, uh, it will hit you, no matter what, no matter whether you know, the stigma of being somehow you know, a doctorate in this and that or what, or psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever you know, social science field you work in, you, know, you are just as much human. And, uh, and life can kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's what uh, is happening sometimes, you know, in life. Yeah. So, other than that, uh, let's see again. Um, this song is, uh, was sung by my Uncle Joe again. Let's see if I can sing it without making a mistake. And what are the comments over here? What are the... Marianne Borja, good morning, ma'am. We got uh, Ki Isaac Kikosam, the first time here. Delma Limes, it's been a while with me. And some of this, uh, Marcy Santos. Marcy, my friend. <laughs> ah, just like a student telling me to go back to work at a, as a student. In spring. You need to go back and work at a medical referral. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck man I have to address a lot of issues in medical referral you know um, and uh, I think it's just the way I see medical referral being a very important uh, 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 an issue that needs to be addressed as part of the priority no, I hope that the governor is making that a priority priority you know, uh, I think fixing the road is uh, 
is <laughs> secondary to fixing freaking people's life <laughs> because of our lack of no uh, frenzy, um, lack of uh, funding. No, uh, medical referral is very important to me, to me, and I think I worked with uh, the lieutenant governor then. Back now, he's a governor, Arnie de Lacy Palacio, and he's the one who opened the door for me to address the uh, stipend for the medical referral. Uh, uh, escort. The escort was not getting for uh, a couple of years. They were not getting uh, the stipend. I think a, a year and a half. They were not getting stipend. Even to the fact that no, the governor received the ARPA, no, they were just having a party with it, and no, nobody ever thought about the uh, uh, escort no, no, being uh, uh, being forgotten of the stipend to restore back the stipend when they uh, uh, what do you call it? Cut it out from part of the budget back then, no, in the 2020, when the pandemic came in. So after I was uh, trying to open the door of the governor, it's locked, <laughs> it's figure speech. But I, I was calling them, I was, you know, I was ha having to be, uh, uh, um, the secretary of the governor had to hang up on me because I'm very insistent, very, very you know, assertive, uh, can I say aggressive? Well, it's safer to say assertive. But I was trying to address the, the medical referral you no know, stipend for the escort. And Arnu in the Lacey Palacio opened that door with me and uh, in front of you know, him, um, he was discussing uh, the uh, restoring of that with Dave uh, Atalik. And they said, why not? Uh, we have a lot of money. That's Dave's uh, word. <laughs> we have a lot of money. <laughs> anything goes, whatever, anything else you want, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> or lieutenant governor, no, because I think the governor was just around and he didn't want to have to deal with me. So, um, and it ended up just then that sitting alone on that meeting, no, it was uh, possible and it was uh, addressed and uh, it was restored. And I think in about you know, two, three weeks, it, it was uh, back on, uh, back on being uh, on the budget, I mean, uh, open, open up to uh, pay. And because uh, uh, the escort of those patients uh, were were sharing with the patient themselves, and what happened when they go into the hospital to get their new no, uh, surgery or medical no help? Guess what? No. Um, <laughs> What is it? Uh, true, a lot needs to be addressed. Yes, it is. It needs to be addressed, and you know. Um, As much as needs to be addressed, I think you no, know, the governor right now has to put that on top, you no, know, uh, of that list because we have a lot of uh, uh, patient that needs a lot of you new know, afrane. This smooth referral. That's what I want to see. It's a smooth referral without having to, you know, imagine you're sick. Your escort is kind of like uh, getting stressed out for whatever they need to you know to uh, prepare, you know, getting off from work or whatever it is, or this and that, and all the headache of trying to you know, travel and when were we coming back and everything and can we do fundraising and all this stuff, this and that. And uh, this is sad that you know, our government abuses the funds in the previous administration and still, you know, you know two billion dollars. And they were in deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can we dig the fucking Mariana space to <laughs> fucking bury all this new <laughs> like shit? <laughs> I thought no, the Mariana space is deep, but <laughs> no, the fucking problem surface. <laughs> like shit, get down there. <laughs> we don't want to <laughs> face all the problems, but we have to, and, and that's what Arnu is uh, having to face. And uh, some people of the previous administration would think how patient has to pay uh, for airfare. Yeah, and I, uh, uh, a patient was you know, uh, taking care of that because you no, know, she was very worried. And I have to you know, call es uh, Esther and the uh, medical referral. You no, know, that's not gonna happen. And uh, she called me up, and it was addressed. Uh, another one in Guam. They were addressing about you no know, having to return back to Saipan because of what you know what they're trying to do, whether they're trying to be efficient in in uh, the process 
they're supposed to return back home yesterday, but now they postponed that you no know, travel to come home yesterday and have to stay uh, longer, a couple days longer, so that they can have their treatment today accordingly to the uh, uh, recommendation of the uh, doctor in Guam. So I have to have fucking address on that shit. Those are pieces of pathetic you new know, issues that are really you new know, for the medical referral. And it is a big issue for the patient. Their last, you know, uh, I think it's a kind of a shot so that a patient cannot no longer you know uh, having to feel the agony of that pain, 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 pain. And it's, it's helping and for the first time a miracle happened. So it's crazy, yes, Marcy, it's crazy in the medical world. And I, you know, I can just sit here and talk about that and uh, I sympathize with you new know, people in the medical referral field. Uh, the governor and I uh, during the uh, appreciation, that was his first word. He was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how in that world we're spending that millions and millions in medical referral. I said, go, efficiency. Not just efficiency, maybe they are their intentional that you no know, the inefficient of it was meant for more time for the patient to uh, stay away and uh, somebody's making money. It's a business more than trying to take care of it. It's not like a, for me, you no, know, it's my opinion. This is my opinion that you no, know, it is more of a business. Yeah, fuck no, it doesn't matter about the efficiency. The more efficiency, the more it is. And imagine to send the patient back. Because they you know, they told this patient that no, um, we, if we have to send you back again, <laughs> we're gonna we bring you back and you will pay another trip to go back there and then another more and more and uh, you know, yeah. Because um, like my medical referral would have only probably take uh, three days and end up having to uh, uh, stay seven days. And I can, uh, I can tell you exactly in details as to how can that be possible to drop, cut it down to three days using a, a caseworker with a televideo uh, to take care of a lot of some of the administrative part more than the, uh, the medical surgical part. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of the patients are just sticking around more or flying around. And then I should have stayed there in the Two weeks, according to the uh, to the people there, no, are you gonna stay no two weeks? No, 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 no. And I, so I have to no, speak up and dictate no my my schedule. <laughs> and then the the Guam no, surgical no, center. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So they they work with me, uh, ensuring that no, I'm just there in seven days. But when they, when I was there seven days, it could have been cut down. To Three days having a good case worker so I told the governor you know hey a good case worker with a good paying job with this and that may even you know it may sound like you no know, that one case worker has a it's very expensive very expensive with a very qualified that you no know, people will be killing each other to get that job and to be effective to ensure that you no know, certain you know, medic I mean expenses of those processes are taken care of in a more efficient way and saving you know, money. Yeah, so that other patient can benefit from it instead of wasting and wasting. Uh, that uh, turns into more of a business, more than actual medical referral addressing you no know, you know, uh, sickness. That is, uh, we can't handle it on our own. On our own and the mentality of, you know, needs to be break off. And uh, I guess if somebody's making money, you know, they're gonna be very corrupted. Yeah. Cut up in the lesson! Motherfucker! Shut the fuck up! I'm a man, 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 I'm a man,
this uh, song is sung by my uncle, like I said, uh, Joe Cabrera. Mas matungo niya no fa, uh, familia no uh, Tanton Batchit. Uh, Tanton, then si, uh, my goodness, Nambek, no? Yeah, Nambek, Nambek, Tanton. Yeah, they live just down the road here in the opera fit niya. Cabrera family, a beautiful family. My uh, grandpa's no uh, uh, family because my grandfather is uh, Jose Cabrera Munya, family and Timma. Everybody has uh, uh, better known as family names. <laughs> we got Bernadita, no, no, no. Celis and Nicholas, thank you for joining in, and my classmate, Ju, uh, Chumbay, Susa, Lizama, and John Regis. Marcy again, yeah, thank you very much, Just Marcy, and uh, Man, um, when I see Marcy's name, like a, I want to fight again on me for <laughs> My goodness, I sympathize with a lot of the issues. Like, uh, you know, they would call me up. They won't call their you know, precinct representative. It seems like, you no, know, and I can understand that kind of dynamic as far as you know, calling my congressman and you know, to address issue in the government. Because government and government is like, hey, shut up! But I guess a congressman, no, or <laughs> I comprehend <can't bring> that. <laughs> but no, if it's a constituent no, like myself and screaming out, no. Oh shit! <laughs> no, they're, they're not gonna vote for me. Let's just check these things out. <laughs> oh fuck, he's fucking things up for me to get my vote. But within the government, no, yeah, fuck it, never mind. Prof. I'm attending this congressman, this senator. And I'm not going to do this, Prof. I'm going to start back. So. That's why sometimes you no know, being advocacy is very effective and it just depends on how you approach you no know, advocating you know, for issues. And there we go, you no know, Edmund Villa Gomez, sir, you no know, uh, I've been waiting for your uh, I understand sometimes you tell me you no know, if we can meet but you message me and usually I call you and I try to respect you, sir. Um, you know, because I know you're a busy man more than you know, having to take care of my ass. <laughs> and uh it would be nice if you call me too because I, I, I fail to read your message in, in the phone, let alone trying to read message. And good morning, no, sir, uh, Mr. Edmund. Yeah, uh, the reason why I'm very critical to uh, call you. I, I don't want to be screaming out about no, my opinion regarding no, what we should be uh, addressing for sometimes. No. Things stall me. It slows me down when I start dealing with uh, government officials. I tend to respect you, to give you the courtesy, you know, sir. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in to my show. Yeah, you still have time to go before you go to work. Uh, that, this, is, this is the problem in government. I like to express my opinion, neither right nor wrong. Likely, you know, it's addressing issue and it's punching it up and it's poking nerve. And uh, like in the military, I stand corrected because I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's my opinion, and uh, you know, no, I expected that no, in some level of no, uh, no uh, some level, you know, it, 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 and and in some cases, it's okay that it's wrong, and maybe perhaps intentionally that it it, it should be wrong so that it be corrected by leaders, and that's the reason why they should run to the media and correct it because they know better or maybe they go to the media to lie. Uh, all those things I'm fucking mindful for. So when I'm addressing topic, I don't fucking need to do my research. Just fucking express it like anybody. Maybe I'm just a, a high school dropout that don't, any be don't know any better. I don't even know how to read. I don't even know how to think for myself. I'm just fucking doing my freedom of speech that no. The government is fucked! I'm not the one that's thinking like that. <laughs> you know, that's freedom of speech. Yeah, so, you know, and uh, <laughs> some of the politicians out there that are even maybe, you no, know, my close friend, I'm mindful, yeah, they may just send them, you know, just keep it to yourself because <laughs> those are the kind of thing that it's okay, it's natural to send them, you know, but when you start telling people that, you know, you become a very, you know, uh, you're not a public servant, you no. Know, it's very unfortunate that sometimes if you're a public servant, no, suck it up. <laughs> or fuck with it. <laughs> and uh, Edmund Bela Gomez is one best example. I love this guy. Very no, humble. You understand me? <laughs> Even if he's listening to me right now, that this is the way I am. 
Yeah, when I deal with you know, uh, leaders, just like the governor said, uh, you're like my, you're like a thorn on my side. And he was victorious in his, uh, and um, it won't be the last because you know, it's not really an intentional, but it's an expression of feelings as to what's happening in the government that needs to be addressed and uh, focus, focus, focus. Yeah, so in, in a sense, I'm just like any voters or constituent or anybody else, anything that no, no I'm not gonna, no, uh, you know, some people, they wanna do their no research and they're gonna speak out. Um, yeah, that's good too. Sometimes I do reading, uh, newspaper, newspaper are not all factual, but you give you the base of what you want to address, no? And um, that's, it is what it is. If I were to do a research and do my thesis on it and do my presentation, then it's not opinion. <laughs> like one of the uh, attorney general that I was trying to present a problem as far as in the residency, <laughs> he wants me to bring a fact. <laughs> If I found a fact, you know, maybe you know, just to share with him. But other than that, no. What for? It's a fact already. So we're trying to uh, look for answers to some things that you know, requires, you know, sometimes uh, attorney general to use their power to search out information. Not me. Imagine me going to department, you know, or to, to, I this a person who. Can I see that information with this person? Because I want to make sure he's a she, he resident of uh, this area. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. This Mossy again. I think I'm too long on this stuff. Um, I will call new you, sir, again, and uh, for at least schedule a meeting maybe this week again. I'm very reasonable person, but it gets on my nerves when it doesn't happen because <laughs> it's stalling me to scream out and say no. Fuck these leaders! Fuck them! <laughs> you know, it's, it's slowing me down to just get it out and, and say my opinion that may just destroy things that may not really know uh, and be uh, good for that person working very hard. Regardless of all the understanding, it's not helping. Um, in me, when I advocate, I can poke. I can be very critical. I can be very... You know, you know, small things become fucking big, like I said, no, that's a fucking governor. <laughs> like, holy shit, I'm looking for that. Uh, yeah, stir things up. Let them deal with it. <laughs> just, to, just to rock the boat. <laughs> Spice it up. Clock <laughs> This is just the way it is. When you are an activist, <laughs> you know, spice it up. You know, when I address a problem in medical referral, people in the government, you know, like people in Hawaii, Jolly Poy is one of them. He start to tell me story, I said, yo, keep your story. We want to hear your story. We want to hear that the money is there for the patient so they can buy new food. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about stories. Yeah, it's not gonna help the patient no, starving uh, or the escort, no. That's why I don't need explanation. People who know their job, who are prepared and are very pretty much, you know, that's why we win wars. Yeah, you know. Because if you're not prepared and you're just gonna tell me stories why you fail your mission, no. it's just a story that gets you fucked. <laughs> The general says, <laughs> yeah, you're no longer the commander, <laughs> you piece of shit. Get the fuck away from my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I call up a medical referral, no, don't tell me stories. Tell me no, um, the solution that you're addressing. It. Sometimes, they, sometimes they fix the problem even before they even share with me. Uh, and that's very important. Yeah. Because uh, solution is more important for the benefit of the patient more than fucking no. Oh, you know what? We're transitioning and, uh, you know, you know, the computer is glitch and, uh, you know, uh, you're the bitch. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, I'm not, how do I say? I know I'm very mindful of 
leaders out there. They want to be leaders and they want to be seen as such, but they're unbecoming a leader. They're just unbecoming of those leaders because that's all they want is just the recognition. That's why sometimes I tell the congressman and senators and governor himself, motherfucker, yeah, you want to honor that title, then be be that title accordingly so I can give you that respect. But if you want to have a title and you're not, you know, uh, stooping up to that you know, title, but you're just a piece of shit servant that, you no, know, it's almost like firing your, you no know, um, worker or, or whoever's working for you that is just not really you know, performing up to the standard. That's exactly my point, no? Right on. <laughs> Adios, Joe. Mr. Manibusan, good morning, sir. We got Ali Inda. I think that was in the Lesio. Yeah. Mr. Noah speaker here be like, uh, what the fuck in the Lesio? The last time I was tuning with you. <laughs> Are you chewing me on life? <laughs> yeah, but it is what it is. And uh, you understand. Diana Santos, good morning, man, Marcy, and everyone. And I'm glad uh, he's tuning in to, uh, and that's exactly, in a sense, I encourage leaders to uh, to uh, look into social media. Uh, no, 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 I don't want the social media. No, you know what? You want to feel the, uh, all the gripes, all the the problems, you no, know, in the society. Yeah, sometimes social media is, uh, is there. You can hear a lot of the, uh, like when I start up this, then certain people, yeah, the lackey is a leader and all kinds of you know, back and forth, this and that. And sometimes the you know, leaders may not want to to feel the impact or, you know, that be stressful, but it is I mean, a message uh, that is uh, out there. And it's all up to you how you're going to you know, counter it uh, because it's affecting you, regardless how hard you work when people are out here and you know, still, you know, uh, screaming out, yeah. In times, you no, know, you have to use social media to listen to the to the cry of the people more than you no. Know, you just in your own little world thinking, you know, you're a Superman, you're doing a lot of good things, and then all of a sudden you're missing out, you no, know, you no. Know, the cries of the people in social media that you no, know, describing how fucked you are, and that's our more regardless of the truthness to it and their opinion, but those opinion and expression are gonna affect you. Uh, of your vote uh, that you know, you're working so hard not realizing that you're so blinded you're so blinded as to know yeah you're just like ah, no, no. if I get on the social media it's just gonna stress me out and, but they're fucking uh, you know no, no telling you that no, you don't support no um, medical referral you know you're just this you're very no, discriminating no, you don't uh, do this you're just lacking this kind of decision and you're a poor leader and Da, 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 da. Especially when, like myself, I toss it out and people say, Yanni, Yanni! <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, especially this and that, and CEO and the congressman, and especially the chairperson of that, you know, um, you know uh, medical for a while or a CUC or anything. So, you know, from time to time, I, I hope that our leaders invest just a little bit of time just to check out, you know, you know what's boiling out in the social media that is... Uh, that will give him a little bit more an addition to their perspective as to who they are as a leader. Yeah. Because uh, we might not go to, uh, to before them to testify on the issue that we are uh, apparently disappointed or we're not happy about, but it's all on the social media. Uh, it may not be on record, but no, I think sometimes uh, those information flowing in the social media is just as valid as to know how to rethink some of the proposed you know, bills to be, uh, uh, what do you call that, voted in and yeah, become a law. So, all right, how many times am I gonna say, what the fuck, adios. This must see today is again, it's February, what, 27, um, 2023, good morning. Fabian in the last year, I've with Fabian and uh, you know, just sharing, sharing, sharing a lot of this stuff that uh, hopefully you know, it makes sense, no? Um, 
you know they should just well you guys are all bunching up in here no it's just mossy i've been uh you know uh can you see i'm a very handsome monkey and i'm still trying to shave this off because i was all black furry <laughs> I've been called monkey, I've been called whore, I've been called fucking, no. how do I say that, no, a trader, or not necessarily specifically, but in a sense, no, and I'm a chamorro, and I'm, I'm uh, somehow being accused of uh, now kissing up to the uh, governor, believe me, <laughs> all of these are fucking all wrong, I'm trying to defend myself, but in a sense, no, some of my viewers would like to hear, no, that, no, I've been called, no, um, you know, idiot, Monkey, 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 see monkey. <laughs> that is all right. <laughs> so I love it. I love it, and uh, it's good to be criticized sometimes because it pulls in more viewers. Sometimes you gotta look at that in that manner. No? If people hate you and uh, it's spicing up, you no know, more numbers in the viewers. Hey, very good. <laughs> How many more people can I be pissed off? Pissed, pissed off, or oh, pissed? No. So. As far as the uh, Indigenous Affairs Office, no people, I'm a very no, loyal, uh, I'm not really loyal, uh, how do I say that? I'm tomorrow, I'm telling you. Um, both of them are from my grandma, and there's, not, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not gonna go one side or one this and that in times, no. I enjoy collecting artifacts that are just basically more of, after 3,000 years, I'm only finding you know, in San Chamorro and sometimes they they criticize me. Can you, you know, collect also no? <laughs> what? No. So it's not not one or, or the other is better than this and that. I'm just, you know, I'm more in tune in advocating for you know, the people. Um, my friend, I said, I don't know how he was insulted to say a solo protest, meaning no, no, I'm not gonna tell the government. Hey, there was a bunch of uh, people up doing that around the fucking, you know, you know, no indigenous affairs office. No, it was a solo. And I said, my friend, and I said no. And in this uh, early stage of you know, the relationship between me and the governor, you no, know, uh, I'm working, you know, building it up to ensure that you know, a lot of the things that I've addressed are are, are being welcomed. And uh, exactly, you know, when this uh, solo person of my friend was uh, addressing you know, the question of why and why the other is open. Meaning, why is the, why is the Chamorro, I mean, Indigenous Affairs Office is closed and why the Korean Office, and the, uh, the, I mean, the Korean Affairs Office is open. So, whether I agree or disagree, you know, at this point in time, you no. Know, I rather kick ass on medical referral issue than uh, having the governor to to whether he's telling the truth or he has he didn't do his homework or he did his homework. No, I was uh, he was very no uh, courteous. Uh, give me the courtesy of no at that last minute to uh, sat with him and uh, discuss. As you all know, it's on live video. If you wanna know listen more of it is the governor's explaining the closing uh, temporary closing i see sometimes people misunderstood you no know, and everybody's panicking you know and this is the one information that everybody knew uh you know, should listen to that video the the governor's explanation because you know even other tomorrow you no know, why 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 i vote for that governor and why why and see how you know, the governor and the pio should counter those kind of why 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 and how many people you know in that you no know, uh mode of why 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 no now no and the people out there are you no know, criticizing who vote for Tories was more of you no know, that governance ratio that governance ratio <laughs> so you know it, it, it's up to the governor's office uh the pio to ignore those things or it's just kind of like a cancer who will grow bigger that you no know, it is true what it is of what other are claiming that you no know, either he's a ratio or uh uh, you know, no, he really intentionally close it because he hates tomorrow, or, or, but regardless of he's a tomorrow, and he's a, you know, because the government's explaining all those reasons why, you know, the temporary closure of the Indigenous Affairs Office, and it was going, uh, you know, he's uh, reviewing it, analyzing the uh, 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 staff of their resign because, you know, the new administration, the ARPA is out, and all those explanations why it's temporary. If everybody is, um, 
confused or misinterpreting the closure of the Indigenous Affairs Office as uh, being permanent, more than you know, the opposite of just being temporary. You know. Then, uh, you know, no, no, because no, no, I went and find the answer who's responsible for that closure, not screaming to a building, run, running around, why, 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 and, and that, so the governor can have to go there and block, hey! My office is up there to capture you. See how no unreasonable that can be. And I'm not here no defending the governor, but I'm sharing my understanding to that issue. And uh, believe me, <laughs> I I uh, continue to follow, you know, what, what's happening. And it's good for anyone else uh, other than myself to advocate and address uh, other issues too, to their liking or to their no whatever topic or whatever issue you want to address, hey, everybody should stop doing it. Not, not only me or not that only that person, but I encourage everybody. So I try to call my friend and um, he refused to know, open up communication with me, so I just blocked him. You know, uh, it was my friend and all of a sudden, he bite me back. <laughs> and uh, other people too, you know, I tried to, and they seen it as a, uh, <laughs> As someone, I'm, I'm a betrayer of no my own blood. No, <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah, but um, that uh, Indigenous Affairs Office is in good hand. No, that will be addressed uh, regardless. No, and um, that's how I'm seeing it so far, and I'm mindful how this um, topic is being addressed. But more of it, the financial crisis is just, like I said, I'm always mindful for that. I'm always mindful every day on of what the governor is. Uh, we're almost like uh, going to be on the third month and I've seen him only once. Uh, or twice, yeah, too. And I'm, I'm, I'm being very reasonable. I'm a reasonable person. That there are other bigger issues, regardless of how the issue I'm addressing may seem big for me and the people I'm advocating for. Okay, so those are the things you need, someone needs to reflect as an advocate too, but at the same time, hey, party! <laughs> Adios, thank you very much, Amy, and thank you so much for tuning in, ma'am, she just must say, and uh, Elmo, thank you, I'm just kind of scrolling backwards, hey, Cabrera, Luis, Luis, Don, um, Grace, thank you, Adios, have a nice day, everybody, and I hope I'm making sense. If not, then you're in the wrong no, show. <laughs> or just stick with it and complain about it. <laughs> Look and bless you. Adios, everybody.